Thank you, Scott. Good morning. good morning. Welcome. It's good to be together this morning. God has given us this opportunity to come and to worship him. If you are visiting today, we welcome you. May God bless you as we worship together. And if you're joining us online today, we welcome you. May God bless you as we worship together. Um, there are a couple of announcements as we open this morning. Uh, firstly, this afternoon at 2 p.m. is a meeting of the worship committee here at church. So if you're on the worship committee, uh, plan on that. We're uh, continuing to plan for uh, upcoming services, and, and uh, it's coming. Uh, Easter isn't too far away now. It's a little ways, but we're getting some thoughts and plans ready there and looking forward to it. Uh, another thing, this Tuesday evening, um, we're going to be having instrument practice, so 7 p.m. here at church. Uh, for those involved with the instrument uh, practice, uh, make note of that. The other thing is that this is a time of year when some of our membership is doing service projects. Uh, Bill Jansen has gone to Africa right now. Uh, Scott Naderhoff is planning to go to Dominican Republic. Uh, in February, and uh, there's still opportunity to support the, uh, the ministry there. Uh, they're providing water to people who, who need it in the Dominican Republic, and the um, bucket in the front room is for donations to help with that ministry. This is the last day that you can give to support that, so uh, take that into consideration as you uh, give uh, in praise of the Lord, and uh, may that all go well in February. Our call to worship today is from the word of the Lord. God speaks his word into our world, and this is the word for today. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And he made the heavens, and he made the earth. And let us praise the Lord our God. We'll rise to receive our greeting first, but then we'll sing a song of praise to our triune God. We'll talk about this more later, but this is the word of greeting. Grace and peace to you. From God, who is our Father, in Jesus Christ, the bringer of peace, the Lord, the Savior, through the work of God, in his Holy Spirit. Amen. And Lord, I lift your name on high as our hymn. Let's stand and sing uh, number 610 in the hymnal. Lord, I lift your name. Greet one another. Thanks for the folder, too. That's. together. Our Lord and our God, thank you for this February day. Thank you for the people around us. Thank you for fellow Christians. Bless us all as we live for Jesus in this world. 
We ask for physical health. We also pray for spiritual health. Bless us spiritually today. In Jesus we ask. Amen. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let's raise a hymn to the Lord. We can remain seated, but that's our next hymn. Shout to the Lord. It's so good to be together and sing those praises together. We read God's word also, and his will for us comes from Matthew 6 and uh, a couple of portions of the Sermon on the Mount this morning uh, from the Lord Jesus as he looked out and he saw those who were around him and he speaks these words. Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you'll wear? Isn't life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spend. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you You've little faith, so don't worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge, or you too will be judged, for in the same way you judge others, you'll be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from the other person's eye. Don't give dogs what's sacred. 
don't throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Those who seek find, and to those who knock, the door will be opened. And for a congregational prayer this morning, we have some things to pray about, but I also want to ask you, if there's something you'd like me to include in our prayer today, maybe it's something you're thankful for, a blessing of the week, maybe it's something that you're concerned about and you want to lift up to the Lord uh, together. Um, just to raise your hand and we'll include that in our prayer. Yes, Lucille, sorry. <laughs> Okay. We'll lift them up as they struggle with some health issues. Thanks, Lucille. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, we'll pray for him as he goes in for tests this week to treat his colon cancer. It's already advanced to his lungs and liver, so. Okay. Thanks, Arlene. We'll pray for him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, both are traveling many miles. Pray that all goes well for them. Thanks, Tony. Yes. Amen. Um, we we'll give praise for the sunshine. Helps melt that snow out there. All right. Well, let's lift up our hearts to God together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we rejoice that you are with us. You promise to be with your people when we gather together and worship, that you can bring your word, but also listen to us and the thoughts of our hearts even. And we bring to you this morning a world and you know fully the conflicts and difficulties going on in the world and places like Israel and Palestine and Ukraine. And we ask for peace, true peace in those places. We pray that there will be well-being and not the loss of life. We ask for those who have special concerns this week. Uh, some suffer from pain, maybe back pain. Would you bring healing to them? Some struggle with dementia. Help them day by day as they face the challenges of the day. Some struggle with mental illnesses. Help them too to get what they need. We lift up Arlene's nephew this morning as he goes in for tests this week to determine treatment for a cancer that has already spread. We pray for healing, Lord. Be with him and be with his caregivers, including his family around him. Lord, we lift him up this morning. We pray for our missionaries. Thank you for them. Bless their work, whether it be a, a Christian school in Nicaragua or missionary training far away near China or working in South Africa, going to Uganda, 
going to Dominican Republic. Bless Bill and Scott in their travels. Keep them safe. Thank you for putting the desire to do this in their hearts. And thank you that we can uh, support them in prayer and in other ways too. We lift up those who are ill. Lord, we hear of illnesses going around, colds and flu. Would you bring healing to those who struggle with that? And we thank you for the gorgeous sunrise this morning and for the sunshine in the sky and for the seasons and for the way that the warmth melts the snow that waters the ground. And we ask that our ground may get the water that it needs, that things may grow again and abound, that our fields may be productive and filled with life. We lift up Lucille's sister and brother, the Molders, and pray that uh, they may improve with their health concerns and that things may go well for them. Uh, we, we ask for well-being there too. Lord, we pray for each of us this day that as we worship, uh, that you will be with us and that we'll grow and that you'll guide us, not just today, but throughout the week and throughout our life. Bless the ministry of the church today and in this coming week, it's a busy week, lots of things going on and ministries happening and, and uh, help us to, to be faithful and to help one another out as we go uh, through life together. Bless each one in the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have an offering today, and the offering is the first of the month already, first of February. As is our custom, the first of the month is uh, received for the uh, ministries of First CRC, the Building uh, Fund, and the Michigan, Michigan Mission and Benevolence Fund. So we'll uh, praise the Lord in our giving as he lays that on our hearts to do that. Let's sing praise to the Lord. Um, our next hymn is the hymn, Lord of All Good, and it's 879. We'll stand and sing the three stanzas. We look to the Lord and give our gifts to him. Let's stand and sing.
I invite the children forward. We have a children's moment today. Hello, guys. Hey, hey, McKenna. Oh, we have a good crew this morning. Good to see you guys. Hey, I brought my plant today. Um, this is a plant that I keep in my study. Oh, we got a couple more. Hey, good to see you guys. All right. I'm going to scooch over and make some more room yet. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, I brought my plant today. And as I look at it this week in my study, I thought of all the people that were involved in this plant. At some point, a person put a seed in a little planter. And maybe it was the same person, maybe it was somebody else, made sure that the plant got water and light and that the temperature was right. And then when it was ready to go to the store, another person took this plant and brought it to the store. And then my wife saw it and thought, this would be good for Steve. So she bought it for me. And I think this was for my birthday this year. And now it's my turn. I have to take care of this. What do I have to do? Does anybody know? Logan. Yes. Yes. Watering it is a big part of it. And I brought my watering can. And I need some help. Do you think you could put a little bit of water on my plant for me? Hey, that's perfect. Thank you. The plant says thank you, too. It needed it. Yeah. Well, thanks. You guys helped me this morning take care of my plant. That reminds me of something. I was going to share a verse with you. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And it makes me think that the church is kind of like this plant. And when you guys take care of this plant, you watered it, you're kind of like, well, sometimes leaders in the church take care of the church and try to help it to grow. Well, these verses are kind of about that. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are God's co-workers, and you are God's field. I just thought that was a neat verse when I looked at my plant this week. And maybe when you guys see a plant this week, maybe in your house, you can think to yourself, well, God is taking care of me, and he's making me grow. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can uh, learn about you today. And thank you that you take care of us and help us to grow, not only bigger and into bigger kids, but as we put faith in Jesus, that our faith will grow too. And bless us this week. In Jesus we ask it. Amen. Now, my wife got a whole bunch more candy this week, and it's a good thing she did. So... You guys can have something on your way back.
I can't get it up there, but anyway, we'll go with our passage today from John, and it's John chapter 14, verses 22 to 27. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I've spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And that's as far as we read this morning from the word of the Lord. We got something there. Let's. <laughs> Not sure why it's doing that, but we'll just go on with our uh, message. This past week, um, I had some anxious thoughts, and I think it was related to the news. Maybe I shouldn't listen to the news first thing in the morning, but it's my custom. What's the news, I ask Alexa, and then she tells me, and this past Tuesday morning, the news was well over 50% about the conflicts in the world, about the killing in Israel and Palestine, about the base that was attacked by the drone, the U.S. service members killed, what would the U.S. do in response, would it provoke a larger conflict yet, hard not to be anxious in the world today. I walked across the street to my study, looked for a passage to proclaim today, settled on these words from Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. And I prayed, where is it, Lord? We look around in the world today and there's so much conflict, so much disarray. Where is this peace that Jesus spoke of? He even emphasizes it. Peace I leave you. Peace I give you. When words are repeated like that, he's emphasizing it. Thought, well, let's look into this passage today. As I did, I noted that the people around Jesus, well, if eventually they wanted peace, in the interim they anticipated there would be conflict. Conflict in order to get there to peace. He had followers who believed that what he really should do is raise up a large army, 
that would be able to defeat the Romans and kick them out of Israel and Palestine, and that would be the way to peace. However, Jesus had a different plan. I'm glad he did. The plan he had was God's plan. And Jesus is committed to God's plan in his life and his ministry. And the more that we learn about his plan, the more we see how it was different from what so many in the world were looking for. But it's what the world needed. And there can be a difference between what we think we want and what we truly need. And Jesus is committed to this plan. And there's probably other ways to say this. But this morning we call it the Messiah of Philippians 2. And the Apostle Paul revealed this plan of God in Philippians chapter 2. He called the church to focus on Jesus Christ. And he reflected what Jesus does. He says he did not consider equality with God's equality with God. So Jesus is God. He didn't consider that something to be grasped, another way that it could be translated, something to be seized, but he emptied himself. He made himself nothing, and he became in nature a servant, being found in human likeness. And he became obedient even to death, death on a cross. And that Paul goes on to say, God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name above every name, and at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. But the plan that God had, that Jesus was committed to, called for his death on a cross. And Jesus was revealing that to his apostles and the plan that God has for our salvation that involves his coming to the world to suffer, to show who he is, his love, the teachings that he reveals, the way of God to us to follow. He's revealing all these things. And Judas, not Judas Iscariot, asked Jesus a question, but Lord, why don't you intend to show yourself to the world? Why do you intend to show yourself, reveal yourself to us? And perhaps in that question is the seed of, why don't you get a huge following so that you can raise up that army and kick those Romans out? But Jesus knew the plan of God, and that God had in mind the giving of grace, to his children who would believe in Jesus. And he says and promises that the Father and Son will make a home with those who put their faith in him. The Father and Son making a home with us? How can that be? And that question helps it to focus on the Philippians, Jesus. How can that be? That Jesus would make it such that he can have a home with us. That was over 30 years ago when my wife and I, so in love, promised each other to have and to hold as long as life shall last. And we committed to making a home together. And at the time, we anticipated it being a place of love, a good place where there's blessings. And thanks to God and his blessings, we are grateful for the years that God has given to us and anticipate his faithfulness uh, through the rest of our journey. 
this past year or two, we were able to see others say, we're going to do that too. We're going to commit to each other in love, commit to the making of a home together. And it's a lifelong vision, till death do we part. First my daughter made a commitment to her husband. Then my son Andrew made a commitment to his wife and they in turn to each other. They would establish a home together with a long-term vision. And that is what God has for us. A home together. A long-term vision. A long-term vision. To put faith in Jesus Christ is to put faith in one who has God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Talk about a long-term vision for good and a home, an everlasting home with him in glory. What a thing. We will make our home with you. God says to you and me today, we will make our home with you. And you will taste it. You will feel what it is to be with God and have his blessings. And even now you'll have a taste of it. Whereas in eternity, it will be a full and great blessing. all because of what Jesus did in being committed to the Philippians to Messiah rather than the one that was so popularly looked for. But we might ask him, Lord Jesus, you make your home with us and the Father with us. How is that so now because you ascended into heaven? Well, we know that God is everywhere and that God is triune so the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are with us. But because of what we have in Jesus, because we have put faith in Jesus, the way that God is with us is a way of blessing. Father, Son, and Spirit. However, in this passage, Jesus has especially in mind the gift of the Holy Spirit into our lives. The Holy Spirit is given a name here. It's called, the Spirit is called the Advocate. When I looked up, what does the word Advocate mean? It means helper. The Holy Spirit is a, is a helper. Well, what's he going to help us with? Among other things, Jesus says he is going to teach you and he's going to remind you what I've said to you. Because in believing what the message of Jesus, the message of the gospel, there is peace. So this Holy Spirit is going to help us to know the truth, help us to know the gospel of Jesus, and even uh, bless our faith and enkindle it, I would even say, in our hearts. So the Holy Spirit has a huge role in all of this to bless, to help, to be with us as we go through life's way. I'm really enjoying this. Um, uh, the adult Sunday school class is going through the series, The Chosen. Maybe you've seen it. Uh, we're looking at the part where, um, well, the last episode began with the Apostle John. And uh, John is interviewing other followers of Jesus, other disciples, other followers, and he's writing things down, and, and I noticed as the series went, sometimes he'll write something down, and, and Matthew also writes something down as they go, and then as, well, after Jesus' ascension, they resolve to write the good news so that people like us can open up a scripture today and read about the teachings of Jesus and be drawn together in faith 
and to grow together. Um, thanks to the gift that God has given us, the gift of the Gospels. And uh, the way that those Gospels are put together uh, and the way that that's portrayed in the series, The Chosen is so interesting. John is asking and they're, they're saying, oh yeah, there was this story and then there was this story. And they didn't want those things lost to history so that they could write them in the Gospels and teach lessons that God wants us to know for our salvation. And in all of this, the work of the Holy Spirit is massively going forward in teaching and reminding of the ministry of the Philippians, Jesus, the one who died on the cross, and that if you believe in his message, you have peace with God, and you're an heir to life everlasting. When I talk about peace, when, when the Gospels talk about peace, more importantly, it isn't a trite, shallow, or superficial wish. And that's the meaning of when Jesus says, I do not give to you, I don't give you this peace as the world gives. How does the world give it? Well, the, that word, peace, is the word shalom. And that was a very, very common greeting in those days and at that time and place in the world. Similar to what we would, hi, hello, have a good day. And we wish those things to the person that we say it to. Yet we cannot achieve it for them. When Jesus says shalom, he has something much deeper in mind. This is something that he, by his death on the cross, provides to us. Forgiveness of all our sins. So that God, a holy God, a triune God, can be with us in blessing. So that he can make a home with us now and forever. The Apostle Paul has this piece in mind when he opens his letters. Among other things, he says to the church, grace and peace to you. He's not saying something superficial when he says peace. He's talking about this peace, the peace from God and Jesus Christ to those who believe. You have the presence of God with you, the triune God with you in blessing. How does that make a difference to you and me today? I wrestled with that this week as I listened to the news. Listening to the news today is an act of courage. All the ways that the world is going wrong. Where is the peace, O oh Lord? And yet Jesus says, my peace I give you. And it dawned on me that what I have in Christ is a kind of foundation for everything else. That because I know Jesus and because God is with me in blessing, I can face everything else. It doesn't mean that I don't have concerns about what's going on in the world and it doesn't mean that I never worry or that I have you know, challenges that seem insurmountable at times but it does mean that God is with me and that's a foundation for facing everything else Father, Son and Spirit in verse 18 Jesus promised his disciples I will not leave you as orphans see he knew that he was going to die on the cross and be raised and then go to heaven through the ascension I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He knew that as we put faith in him, the presence of the triune God would be with his children in a way that blesses, in a way that guides, in a way that provides a home. Which, isn't that kind of when it comes down to it, what we're all really after? A 
home, a blessed home, what God can provide. Last Sunday, we had the blessing of communion. I read from Isaiah 53 as the elements were given. And that passage, for some reason, just meant more to me this week than even last Sunday. Thinking about the home that Jesus has with us in a war-torn world. What did Jesus do? He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. By his wounds we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He bore the sin of many. He made intercession for the transgressors. There's the peace. There's peace with God so that we can have a home with him, a foundation, a base for all the rest. It doesn't take away the concerns, doesn't erase all of our worries, but it helps us set them into perspective. I close with this, which was by God's grace, part of the music that began our service. Because he lives, I, you, can face tomorrow. Let's pray. Thank you for the plan Jesus committed to, the plan that brought true peace so that you have a home with us forever in blessing. Thank you, Father, Son, and Spirit, for your presence in blessing with your church. Even if this world has all kinds of concerns and worries, thank you that we have a foundation that frees us to be a force for good in this same world. Blessed are the peacemakers, you said. Paul, grace and peace from God. Help us to bring peacemakers, uh, bring peace into a world that needs it. In Christ we pray, amen. Our song of response is number 451, and I'll hook up the screen again. Uh, but you're welcome to turn to it in the book. But it's the hymn, When Peace Like a River Attends My Way. And think about that as we sing the peace that God gives us in Christ.
we put faith in the triune God and he comes and makes a home with us, a home of blessing in a world that needs blessing. And we profess our faith together. The words of the Apostles' Creed we use today, this creed that's been used throughout centuries and throughout the world, we join the Christians of the Church of many places. Let's say together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. There's a word at the end of the blessing today. Please take it with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. Savior, again, to your dear name we raise, just verse 4, number 932.